This video is brought to you by Red Nose Day. Red Nose Day is a fundraising campaign with the mission to drive positive change through the power of entertainment. It's a time of charity, community, and of course, laughs. Biggest load of rubbish I've ever heard. What? Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 Red Nose Day sketches. Before we begin, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. Red Nose Day, a fundraiser by the charity Comic Relief, has been a cultural phenomenon in the UK for almost 30 years. Every Red Nose Day, celebrities, musicians, comedians, and the public come together to drive positive change through the power of entertainment. This year's Red Nose Day in America is on May 25, 2017. Now that the event has landed on U.S. shores, we're looking back at some of Red Nose Day's very best skits and interviews. Comic Relief reminds us that we can't leave charity up to knobs like Sting. It's up to all of us to be knobs together. Number 10. Graham Norton meets Borat. The extra match at Graham's. I like you. I like sex. Norton is easily one of the most prolific talk show hosts around, but even he has a hard time keeping Borat in check. What starts out as a fairly innocent interview about Kazakhstan's own telethon quickly turns sour, as Borat begins giving way more information than we ever needed to hear. She gave me relief, not comic, but hand. Somehow in the short span of this call, the subjects of human zoos, slavery, and Borat's encounter with a prostitute pop up. What's more, it seems that his idea of donations isn't quite what Graham had in mind. Uh, yes, a glorious Republic of Kazakhstan will tonight be make donation of our three most precious natural resources, potassium, apples, and human pubis. <laughs> Number nine, Daniel Craig in love. Daniel, normal straw or crazy straw? Crazy. They say that love is blind, but Daniel must be deaf and dumb too. When Elaine Figgis, played by Catherine Tate, connects with a certain Bond Boy 68 on an internet chat room, the two are thrust into a whirlwind romance. Don't get me wrong, he's a lovely chap, but he's no John Nettles. Oddly enough, though, she has no idea who he is and has more than a few complaints about him. Regardless, poor Daniel is head over heels for the repulsive lady, but his efforts are all for naught, and the two inevitably fall apart. Has he gone? Number eight, Simon Cowell's Wedding. Today's reading comes from Take That's Greatest Hits, <laughs> track 17, verse three. We never thought we'd see the day that Simon would make a public display of affection, but it seems his love for the new lady in his life has led him to finally tie the knot. Once the two reach the altar, they face countless objections from some of Simon's co-stars, each of whom makes a bid for his love. Simon, I love you, and I want to sit on your panel. I love you, Simon. Hands off, Dixon, he's mine. Oh. Even Sharon Osbourne goes for it. But at the end of the day, no one could possibly love Simon any more than he loves himself. You're beautiful, I know. <laughs> Number seven, David Tennant, supply teacher. Doctor Who. As the 10th Doctor, Tennant faced off against some pretty fearsome foes, none of which was anywhere near as infuriating as Ms. Lauren Cooper. When she makes the connection between David and the Doctor, she doesn't let it drop and begins to pepper him with all sorts of Whovian insults. Be quiet. If you part the TARDIS on a meter. <laughs> Can we please get back to Shakespeare? But despite her constant disruption of the class, she does end up learning one very important lesson. You don't mess with the doctor. Number six, Ricky Gervais goes to Africa. Despite the deprivation, they don't just give up. You know, they don't just roll over and sit around waiting for handouts. You gotta give it to Ricky. In this sketch, he actually drops the humor to remind us of what the great event is all about by experiencing the harsh realities of poverty himself, sort of. You can't fake being in Africa. Yeah, you can, yeah. Get a blue screen, right? Pop the hat up, Bob's your uncle. When they discover that Gervais has some sound reasoning behind his publicity stunt, both Stephen Merchant and Jamie Oliver want a slice of the pie too, and we get to see their true colors. Turkey Twizzler. Hey, well done. <laughs> really? I love these tasty little bastards. look at that. Bob Geldof eventually turns up and tries to open his eyes to the true meaning behind charity. 
but even he succumbs to Ricky's charm. Is there um, any way I could like get in on this or something? Yeah, of course. You got some product coming out? Yeah, a new single. What's that called? I still don't like Mondays. <laughs> Number five, Alan Partridge versus Tony Maloney. Tony Maloney stole a pony. <laughs> Alan has a tendency to rub people the wrong way. When interviewing the coach of a charitable boxing team, played by Peter Kay, he simply can't help but make a few offhanded comments. But this time, his constant goading lands him in the squared circle. I've been goaded by a fat, damaged man with one lung into <laughs> tackling for charity in a boxing ring. After a cheeky jab at his opponent, Allen ends up getting floored courtesy of one of the gym's young boxers. And pretty soon, the whole thing descends into chaos. Michael Hitz hits him! Number four, Rowan Atkinson is Doctor Who. Where are we, Doctor? The planet Tesserus. Talk about dream casting. In this particular Doctor Who special, we see the Doctor face off against his greatest rival of all, the Master. The stage is set for the villain's coup de grace, but try as he might, the Master always seems to be two steps behind the Doctor, and soon he falls victim to a 300-year trudge through the sewers. After a lifetime of only dung slugs for food, and the occasional company on those long, lonely nights. After the debacle, the Doctor goes through a series of regenerations that see him portrayed as Richard E. Grant, Hugh Grant, and Joanna Lumley. Tell me, why do they call you the Master? I'll explain later. Number three, Ali G interviews Posh and Bex. Had you already seen a picture of her and knocked one out? <laughs> As we've already seen, Sasha Baron Cohen is a man with very few boundaries. When we heard that Ali G would be interviewing the super couple of David and Victoria Beckham, we had some idea where things would go. And this certainly did not disappoint. In an ideal world, wouldn't you rather be with baby? <laughs> Even though the two are their typical stoic selves, Ali G's depraved questions somehow managed to break them. And the two begin to loosen up. Me heard there is an insult in song that they sing about you. As you heard it, what is the words? They say, <coughs> posh buys. <laughs> you, that you take it up the arse. That's what they say. Number two, Mr. Bean's wedding. The delight and the tenderness of sexual union. This classic character has been featured in numerous Red Nose Day sketches, so we were really spoiled for choice when it came to selecting the best of Mr. Bean. But our pick goes to the 2007 sketch, wherein the buffoon attends a wedding ceremony, seemingly uninvited. Repeat after me. I, Daniel, take you, Kate. I, I Daniel, Daniel, take you, Kate. <laughs> Despite his constant irritation and interruptions, things seem to go off without a hitch, and the two are happily wed. But as soon as Bean ruins the dress, that's when the gloves come off. <laughs> Number one, Coldplay does Game of Thrones. There are Starks and there are Lannisters and Kardashians and the... Targaryens, idiot. And Targaryens. When Coldplay lead singer Chris Martin plans a musical of Game of Thrones, we see a veritable who's who of the series' biggest stars performing some powerful and personal ballads. Wow, Lynn. You make my heart sing. Everyone from Amelia Clark to Kit Harrington joins in on the fun, regardless of their singing abilities. And if you feel the love, then you can call me Kylie. Rastafarian Targaryen, an incestuous serenade to Cersei Lannister, a multi-genre ode to the Red Wedding. Keep that wedding cake in the fridge. He didn't, didn't pay me back for using the bridge. I'm, I'm afraid this wedding won't be wise. We gotta hand it to Coldplay. They might be geniuses after all. It's just a shame old George Martin had to go and axe the whole thing. He's gonna go absolutely crazy. And Chris was right. George R.R. R. Martin did go absolutely crazy. This video is brought to you by Red Nose Day. This year's Red Nose Day in America is on May 25th, 2017. You can get involved by starting a fundraiser or by donating today at the link below.